Now we'll go ahead and send it down to Dexter's Diner for Diner Talk. Welcome to Diner Talk. In this segment, me and Logan are down here in Dexter's Diner talking about relevant things in Star Wars. This time around, we'll be talking about Star Wars Return of the Jedi from a certain point of view. Now, this book is a part of the From a Certain Point of View collection, uh, mainly 40 short stories celebrating 40 years of the movie. Uh, this is celebrating 40 years of Return of the Jedi, and me and Logan have picked out a single story, one for me, one from him, and we're going to kind of discuss it, go into a couple talking points about it, and just overall uh, see how we feel about these short stories. So to get into my short story that I picked, <laughs> it's actually called From a Certain Point of View uh, by Alex Jennings, and uh, this this short story is about Obi-Wan uh, on Dagobah as a Force ghost. And mainly, my first point here uh, to talk about is the comparisons that he makes about Luke and Leia to Anakin. Uh, Obi-Wan does this quite a bit. Yes. And it's really, like, it's really nice to see uh, the callback to Anakin just talking about all the good traits that he passed on to Luke and Leia about them being fighters about Obi-Wan just sensing the good side in Anakin or in Luke, excuse me. Cause he can kind of like, he was sensing the conflict in him when he found out that Darth Vader was Anakin, his father. But overall, by the end of the short story, Obi-Wan realized that the good side in Luke is going to prevail and it prevailed in that moment. So he felt he felt really confident in Luke taking down the Empire and bringing Anakin back. And he actually recalled back to uh, to Padme saying that there's still good in Anakin, which is what Luke said as well. And it's overall just a great callback. Uh, what did you uh, kind of think about this, Logan? I mean, I just I love a lot of the sort of flashback sort of moments throughout it. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, he he kind of, it's explained in it how him being a force ghost, he has memory of everything, and he doesn't he doesn't kind of realize that, and he doesn't know if he can control it or not, mm-hmm. and he's going back to these certain memories. He goes back to what we see in the Kenobi show, he sees the fight with him and Vader. And in these flashbacks, he realizes he has to, you know, see it through. Like, he can't just cut off the memory. He needs to see it through because it's him remembering that is a lesson for him, essentially. And those callbacks are just great. And him making those comparisons of Luke and Leia to Anakin. It's just because, you know, he he starts out by making the comparisons in sort of a negative light where, you know, he notices the conflict and certain aspects of Luke that happened with Anakin and could eventually play into the Emperor's favor. Uh, but then by the end of it, he realizes that the traits that Luke has are the good ones from Anakin. And that's what he, he needed that for closure, essentially. Yeah. He, he goes into this just so stressed out. I don't know how you could be a force ghost. You're not even <laughs> alive and you're stressed out. <laughs> this dude is he stressed was, beyond belief. Yeah, he was stressing hard. And by the end of it it's all gone cuz he mm-hmm. realizes it's it's all going to work out in the end yeah so yeah it's i lo- i love those uh those callbacks within this yeah and he did actually mention about how like 
you know, Anakin was, he put others' lives before himself. He always risked his life every battle. And he's seen that in Luke, mm -hmm. which was one of those things where he was like, the Emperor might be able to use that against them. But no, nah, it was, it was great to see that. Um, my second talking point, kind of going back to what you were discussing a little bit about uh, the callbacks to episode three and Kenobi specifically. Um, just him, you know, him reliving those memories on Mustafar uh, when he confronted Vader again in Kenobi. Him reliving that, reliving that scene about uh, him kind of slicing Vader's mask open to kind of see the half of Anakin and half of Vader and mm -hmm. the whole, you know, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did, and him going through all that trauma that he went through, not specifically with Anakin. It was, uh, definitely got a little emotional on there. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but it was, it was really nice seeing all of that. And it was, it kind of gives you an interesting insight to, uh, like a force ghost. Cause we don't know what happens. We don't know what goes on at all, but, um, this gives a little good insight about you must like relive certain memories or the force, I guess, because he does mention the force uh, teaching him like a lesson mm -hmm. by the end of it as well. So I think I think the force definitely plays a part in these memories playing. But yeah, it's like it's like the will of the force is making him relive these. Yeah. You know, because he, he did try to like he look realizes and, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it was that was overall great. I because, like I said, we know nothing about it, so that's actually mm -hmm. like really interesting to know that the force does that. And even after you've went through years of training and you've learned how to become a force ghost, there's always something new to learn, a lesson to be learned. It's 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 just overall great. I enjoyed this story. Uh, and then how'd even you feel about it, the. Uh... I was going to mention even even more of the like the callbacks to Kenobi not even like the fights and stuff but he remembers the last time he saw Leia. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm I remember and that too. Him he 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 somewhat regrets or he feels a bit of regret telling her uh about her parents. Yeah. And realizes how dangerous it could be. Uh yeah, it's just I don't know. He, and then even you you were talking about you you get a lot of insight into a force ghost. He even ex goes into detail explaining how like what it felt yeah. to become a force ghost. Like he he didn't feel any pain. He didn't feel any pain. He just it felt like he felt heat. He smelled his flesh burning, and then yep. it was gone. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he hears the voice of his master. He hears Qui Gon. Oh like, yeah, that was that was amazing. And then even, uh, you know, him comparing like the the screams he's hearing of like of. Uh, his master and and Darth Maul fighting, comparing that to his duel in Kenobi, like just a lot of th that's what I love about stories like this because this is this is based around the scene where Luke uh, is on Dagobah and Yoda dies and then he walks out and Obi Wan's there and has that whole discussion. It's literally that is the scene that is happening during yeah. this in, entire short story but you get so much more because you realize you you know what's going on in obi-wan's head and there's between each line there is so much so much thought going into what they're going to say next obi-wan is like holding back certain information because he's not sure if luke is ready for it and then all this stuff is going on through his mind he's reliving these memories like in the in an instant uh so yeah i mean this this one was i mean solid pick out of you oh yeah i you know i just seen from a certain point of view i was like 
this might be some heat and i started reading it <laughs> and i was like oh this is about that scene on dagobah because it it really takes like a i don't want to say it's not an impactful scene because it kind of is but it takes a scene that maybe not everybody would like uh recall mm-hmm. and it just expands it by like three times the scale of what it actually is and it's just yeah because i feel like what's seen as the more impactful scene is what happens right before it where yoda dies and that whole explanation yeah. goes on there mm-hmm. uh so yeah you you're completely right it just it amplifies that scene so much yeah uh and it's... then you know you you get this we, we talked about this right after i had read it uh like right at the start uh they they're talking about how like how dagobah feels like mm-hmm. the weather and obi-wan yeah. is experiencing that but he's a force ghost <laughs> like yeah. like they're they're playing it as if he's arriving on a on a starship but it's him arriving as a force ghost and it's just so interesting he he feels within the force he sees through the force yoda dying and him becoming one with the force like it's just i don't know a lot of small details that are just super cool uh, and super insightful in the certain you know little little things that you wouldn't think much about yeah and i believe uh just really quick i think obi-wan mentions like the planet and it he can just feel like the force because obviously dagobah is known to be like very strong with the force but yes and and he he like thinks of eyes like this this could be like overwhelming for like Mm -hmm. a lot of jedi but see he sees why yoda picks it and he's i think he's almost like impressed with luke that he's able to you know be here and not be like completely overwhelmed by everything like the amount Mm -hmm. of like force that's on that planet yeah but i was gonna mention how it's cool that he realizes why yoda chose that as his refuge Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we also, you know, we get the the arc in Clone Wars as to another reason why Yoda would pick it. But Obi Wan has no idea about that whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Great. Yeah, super cool. So to now uh, get into mine, this is uh, there's there's one s- small thing that kind of makes these two overlap but they're they're very different in their own right uh this one is titled the veteran by adam lance garcia and we talked about this uh on our holland at news when we highlighted the book uh right before it came out uh, this one was about the man of the hour the diner that we're in dexter jetster uh this is highlighting his story just after the fall of the empire just after episode six literally right after the second death star is is blown up yeah um and we see that he is just absolutely depressed beyond belief uh we'll we'll go into that in in my second point but i just want to highlight the story a little bit and then you (laughs) Uh, it, you know, there's this whole celebration going on on Coruscant and he goes up to the upper levels and sees this whole celebration going on, but also realizes that it's going to be like, there's still Imperials. And even though it's, it's a battle of, uh, the, the rebels who know they've won and the Imperials who don't want to accept they've lost. Uh, that's not the exact quote that's you know i i didn't yeah. don't know it verbatim but that's you know the idea of it uh so dex realizes that there's going to be some bad stuff that happens and he goes up top uh and and goes through this whole thing within the crowd and uh ends on a very somber note but uh to actually talk uh, go into one of my first points about it uh was the guilt the guilt that dex feels the guilt ptsd in in a certain way and depression those are the three main things i wanted to highlight because i think it's just the overarching theme uh at least from the beginning of what just what how dex is feeling 
uh, because he feels a lot of guilt from the Clone War, uh, feeling like he started it and feeling like he led to the downfall of the Jedi. He's, he's on Coruscant. He, he's still there and he is always reliving those, those days, essentially. Uh, and he's still wary of the Empire. He realizes that they're not just going to disappear from, from Coruscant and from the galaxy. Like, they're always going to be there. And something that I, that I, I wanted to bring up was, uh, well, in, in the story, right before he goes up to the top, he really, you know, he walks out of his apartment, I guess you could say, and, uh, you know, everyone's like running by, they, they all want to go up top to, to celebrate. And then they want to go to the Jedi temple, which is, has been taken over by, by Palpatine and turned into, uh, what exactly do they call it? Oh man. I want to say, cause I don't want to say like his chambers, but I feel like it, yeah, it's it's, it's like a speed. it's like a base for the Imperials essentially. Yeah, yeah, I forget uh, what what it's called exactly. But and they just want to go there and just like steal stuff essentially, <laughs> like just <laughs> see what they can do. And yeah. he he stops uh, this one uh, young man named Kamos. I'm I'm gonna assume that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. Uh, and he stops him and realizes that he's going to go up and he has like a vibro blade and he's he but dex realizes that he doesn't know what he's going to get himself into and dex stops him from doing it says go go back home protect your mom you like you you need to be here because if you go up there you might not come back exactly yeah uh and he he's dex has kind of lost hope he even though the the fall of the empire is there, he knows there's still always going to be flaws within the system, uh, and that it's not always gonna gonna work out. Um, you know, we see from the start, we learn that uh, like we get his we get his experience of Order sixty six, like how how he felt in those moments he from his diner he could see the jedi temple burning the diner mm-hmm. was covered in ash for days yeah from the, from the burning and his uh, i don't i honestly don't know if it's his uh like quote unquote wife <laughs> but the droid yeah uh, what's it wanda i believe wanda. Is, her, is her name yep uh she says she says, don't worry about it. It'll all be over soon. It's not going to matter. And Dex kind of realizes, like, I don't know about that. And within three years, Wanda shuts down. And soon after that, he loses the diner. Yeah, that that hit me hard. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie when I was reading that. And he, you know, he talks about how he always thought he was going to be able to get it back. And he was just going to have to take some time. Uh, but he realized that not all things are going to you know, turn out how he wants them to be. Uh, and that's kind of true for what happened after the Clone War. Like, he couldn't control that. But he feels in his mind that he is the cause for it. He s- sent Obi-Wan to Kamino. He, he feels he should have lied in that moment. Yeah. That he, he should have lied and said he didn't know where it was from. And it's just, I don't know, seeing seeing that sort of guilt from someone like Dex, someone that, when you watch the movies, seems like such a minor character, someone that, you know, the thing that he does may seem like such a small cog in the machine, but... If that didn't happen, then everything else wouldn't happen. So he is, in a sense, a direct cause of it, and it's just, it's kind of tragic. So how, yeah, how were you feeling about that whole, uh, <sighs> that whole idea of it? Well, I was depressed reading it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> seeing Dex, I mean, Dex is one of our best friends, and seeing him just down like that, it was, 
a bit of a tough read at first. Because uh, I was actually looking through the book here really quick, so I wanted to see exactly what level he was on. He was on level 2,401. Yeah, and then he, then he highlights, like, how many levels there are, and there's over, yeah, like, 5,000. Like 5,000, yeah, which is just insane. And he's about. he's recalling the time of of his apartment when it was the top level. Mm-hmm. Like, it, yeah. you, you don't realize how old Dex really is. Oh, yeah, Dex, uh, yeah, he is, uh... Like, he's talking they do about that... things yeah. about the High Republic and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they do say that his species does live a long time, so... Uh, definitely makes sense for that but yeah now this this story was great i it was good to kind of see dex because he was obviously like at the beginning he was definitely depressed and you can definitely see why he feels like that Mm -hmm. Uh, but then by the end of it he uh he gets a little bit of a part of himself back yeah i don't want to say like a glimpse of hope but it's like a kind of like that a little bit he He's not so hard on himself. He, he, and then he goes. It ends with him saying, "I don't believe exactly what he said, but it was." Let me tell you about a story about my good old friend Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, and that one just, oh, that just like hits different. <laughs> but this uh, story the, was the Imperial okay. Palace, is what they call Imperial it. Imperial Palace. What, what they That's turned it. the Jedi Temple into. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, he he sees when, when he goes up top, he sees uh, stormtrooper helmets, mm-hmm. and it, it makes him think about the first time he saw uh, the helmets of the clone tr- the clone troopers on the hollow feeds on Geonosis. Like he just a whole bunch of you you see a lot of like. You see the memories of Dex as he's like a bystander in this war, yeah. essentially. Yeah, which is an interesting take because we, you don't really yeah. get that. So, and also um, him, uh, him seeing those protesters, um, about to throw that stormtrooper off like a ledge and like a really deep fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing Dex, even well after everything the Empire did and everything that they went through he was still trying to save that stormtrooper because yeah he's and he sees this this random girl yeah end up stopping them Mm -hmm. and i'll she's gonna be a a a, one of my main next points so i'm not gonna mention her by name because she's not mentioned by name at that point in the story yeah uh but you know she's like saying how you just can't even though they're the enemy, you it's just not how they should be. And um I can I have the page open here so I can actually read it uh by word, but there's like one of the rioters around her says that they had family on Jeddah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and obviously Jeddah was one of the was actually the first planet that the death star was used on yep uh tested and so everyone is like after they hear that everyone's like trying to get this going again and she stands her ground and she says the empire killed billions in the name of peace and security that's how they ended it's not how we're gonna start like yeah that's what they were doing. Why would we do the same? Exactly. And then he, they, the, they put the stormtrooper down and he takes off his helmet and everyone is just like, they realize that what they were doing was wrong because he's just some young boy, like, and they, no older than 20, they say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, they realize how the empire dehumanized these soldiers. Like, you you never see their face and that can make it seem like you're you're just doing what you should by throwing them over the edge to their death like yeah it's it's pretty ridiculous um i wanted to go through and try to find this exact quote about hope because mm-hmm. i think that's another uh pretty 
important uh, theme throughout this this story. So I wanted to yeah. try to find that. But to to move into my next point, and you can talk about it a little bit uh, while I try to find this. But it was uh, the legend of the Jedi and how how they're kind of portrayed uh, throughout history. So the girl, he he ends up going back to his diner. So he the way he gets up from his apartment to the top because he realizes that the Empire is going to shut off all the elevators. He used to be a smuggler, and in his, in, in his years, he had a smuggler route in, from his apartment up to the top. And that route came... It ended, like, it opened up into his diner. Mm-hmm. And he sees it like all worn down. The windows are broken. He gets all the like he's hit with all the memories of it. Yep. Uh, and so then he, when the Empire ends up coming through and killing a lot of uh, all the rioters, all the people in the crowd, and Dex realizes it's going to happen, and he doesn't want he doesn't want them to trample each other. He wants to make sure of that. He does not want them to essentially kill each other. If they're going to die, it's going to be from the Empire. Uh, and that's what ends up happening. He, there's a lot of people he couldn't save, but he then, uh, you know, he leads people down these secret corridors and all these things that he knows because of him being alive so long, being on course on being a smuggler at, at some point. Um, so then he goes back to his diner to eventually go back down to his apartment and the girl is in there hiding. Uh, her name is Vekin Menez. I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and you have this whole discussion with her. So Mark, let me uh, go ahead and get your thoughts on that. I, I have mine, but we're going to, uh, like I said, I just wanted to try to, find this uh this quote on hope yeah yeah well uh so mainly they kind of obviously they talk about it ends up talking about the jedi and it's jedi and hope i guess is the main two subjects in this uh story or this conversation um and dexter he mainly wants to know why she saved that stormtrooper and she didn't really have an exact reason at first because she, she was kind of second guessing herself. She's like, maybe, maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. But then it comes full circle back to the Jedi. And I believe she mainly says that it's just something that a Jedi would do: mm-hmm. uh, put themselves in harm way and save innocent lives. Because that stormtrooper, that you know, twenty year old uh, stormtrooper, was just an innocent life caught in the crossfire, essentially of the Empire and the protesters. And that kind of hits with Dex a lot. Um since he did know a lot of Jedi and one of his best friends was a Jedi, so and then he as he is uh leaving down the smuggler tunnels that he uh used, he asked uh, Vekin, if she wants to tag along with him, he can kind of show her, show her the way around down there. And she he, does know, agree. he knows it's going to come in handy for yeah. the coming days because this conflict is still going to go on up top. It's going to go on for a while as well. He knows that. And then <clears throat> at the end, he goes, he says, it's a lot of walking, he warned. But while we do, I'll tell you about my friend, Obi-Wan. And that's how the story ends. It ends on a f- fantastic note. I don't think it could have ended off any better on that. And I think this interaction is kind of what helps Dex kind of realize that there is good out there. And while darkness and, you know, the dark side and the Empire, they always find their way back around in the picture. Mm-hmm. He realizes that there, this might be a cycle, but there's always good out there as well. Yeah, that's that really uh, hits a lot of those points. Um, 
I I, I kind of wanted to talk about how Vecan talks about how she, even though she's not old enough to have been around when the Jedi were around, he she knows of the legends. She's heard the legends of the Jedi, and uh, Dex talks about the the legends were just as flawed as me and you. Yeah, that was. That was and, a really good uh, line right there. And then, you know, she talks about the light. She talks about the Jedi Temple and how yep. it's always been a symbol, even though it's been turned into uh, the Imperial Palace. It's still a, a beacon of light. Palpatine, that is one thing that no matter how hard Palpatine tried, he could not reshape it into an imperial symbol. It was always a symbol of hope. Uh, and I, I really like that. But so I, I did find the, the quote of hope. So this is toward the, the beginning of it when Dex is fully depressed. He's, he's lost all hope. Yeah. Uh, so this is when he, he hears everyone celebrating and everything. Uh, and he says, he's talking about the, he's heard this song before, the song of hope. Uh, Dex knew better. He had learned the hard way that hope was a hollow thing, promising everything and granting nothing. Hope was for the foolish, and tonight the fools were feasting. Uh, yep. Just, I mean, it, it, a super interesting way to look at it, and a a very telling sign that, that Dex is just in a dark place. Yes. Uh, in In this the ending moment when he's talking to, to Vecan, talking about the Jedi, he, it goes into detail about how he's remembering Obi-Wan and how he would cry himself to sleep. Yep. And it's just, I mean, seeing this sort of thing in Star Wars, is it's so interesting to me. Like, I feel yeah, like it's... it. it as the years go on, I feel like they're definitely getting into more harsh, more of these harsh topics uh, that can, in a way, be very much related to, to real life uh, instances as well. But I don't know. It's just, it's insane. He, he just blamed so much of it on himself that it just yeah. was overcoming any, any feeling of hope that he could have ever had. Uh, and you know you you talked about how he he realizes that the way Vecan thinks is exactly how the Jedi would, and exactly how Obi Wan would. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. He specifically talks about how it's something that uh, that Obi Wan uh, would do, and and how Obi Wan would feel. So uh, such such an interesting story. Um, seeing the life of Dex so many years later after we've seen him and in a character that many might see as not significant and it makes him so significant. Uh, oh yeah. And I don't know, just a, just a phenomenal story. So, I mean, the, these two, both of these stories were, were great to, to read and, and discuss here. I thought it was amazing. Oh yeah, now these stories were absolutely great. I mean, it's only two stories. We still got thirty-eight more stories, yes. and I'm already like hooked on this. Like it's it's great. So it, and it's something that I hope that we can continue to to bring to Diner Talk. I think it's this is the the perfect type of segment for stuff like this. You know, it's oh yeah, no doubt. I feel like these these stories aren't going to reach many people, and I hope that these uh the if we continue to do diner talks on these i hope people enjoy them and i hope they actually get something out of it yeah and i and hope we kind of uh made them think about getting this book because mm -hmm. i'm not me personally i'm not much of a reader i don't sit down and read books but this is something that i could sit down and i could read yeah like this is great so I mean, I had a great time here in Dexter's Diner. Logan, did you enjoy your time here too? Yeah, of course I did, man. It's always a great time being in, in the diner. Uh, 
you know, it's not run down now. This is, yep. this is the place to be. Yep. Well, thank you, Dex, uh, once again for letting us chill down here in the diner. If you guys enjoyed Diner Talk, go ahead and let us know down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys are intrigued in this book and want to get it for yourself. Now with that, we will send you back to the boys in the studio.